The U.S. is having a housing crisis and experts are looking to Utah for the answer. So we want to hear from you guys. Please drop a comment below and tell us what's going on in your area. Are you guys seeing high inventory, low inventory? Is the market going quickly? Is stuff going quickly where you're at or slow? We want to hear from you guys. Utah was kind of one of the first to experience the downswing. So yeah, let us know what you guys are now experiencing. And it's kind of one of the reasons why I think Utah actually kind of has some of the answers of what you might be experiencing in your area. So 100%. Michelle, why don't you jump in? All right. So we're going to be doing an article review today. And this guy is uh, the senior economist of Zillow. It is time to get serious about the U.S. housing supply crisis, a leading issue at the heart of the nation's record high home prices, low rental vacancy rates and affordability problems. So that's something that they touch on there that is not talked about a lot. And that's low rental vacancy. Yeah. Rents in the last two years here in Utah, in Salt Lake County have gone up over 60%, Utah County over 40%. That's more than the home appreciation over the last two years. Yeah. And so it is very tough right now for tenants as well. And yeah. that affordability is a big deal for them. Yeah. In addition to the high rates that we're experiencing for potential homeowners, that's a big deal for them as well. For sure. So that was a key takeaway from the webinar hosted Thursday by the Bipartisan Policy Center focused on the state of the nation's housing market. And Jeff Tucker, a senior economist for Zillow, he explained what a housing recession in quotes really means, why prices are largely expected to stay high, and why we're in a far different situation than we were after the 2006 bubble popped. This is so important for people to understand. I can't tell you how important this is. You guys, we've always told you the truth. We were the first ones to tell you that the market's gonna go down. We told you for months not to listen to the people who was saying like, oh, it's just a new market. Prices aren't really going down. <laughs> totally. And so we wouldn't, we wouldn't be telling you guys this if we didn't really know it and study it and understand it. But the difference between 2006 mm -hmm. and now, the big, big, big factor that people are missing is inventory levels. Yes, amen. 100%. Inventory levels. And that's kind of what they say right here, right? Yep. The U.S. faces a housing supply deficit of 3.8 million Ooh, units. That's crazy. So comparing it to 2006 and seven and eight, you guys, yeah. we had built more homes in the first seven years mm -hmm. than at any other decade previously. We were building about 22 million homes per year, which mm -hmm. was about right. But instead, they built 25 million in seven years. Greed happened, yeah. right? Yeah. Profits were going up. And so every builder was like, let's build double next year. Yeah, yeah. Caused a big problem. And so then we had an over supply of inventory. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, due to predatory lending and things like that, bad loans, that all crashed, yes. made things crash on top of each other versus here we are in 2022 the opposite problem. the opposite is there instead yes. of a 3 million surplus of homes we have mm -hmm. a 3.8 million yeah. deficit 100%. of homes and that is exactly why it's going to be different 100 percent and the demand's there. The only reason buyers aren't out, you know, putting in offers like crazy right now is because rates are so high. Yep. And the reason rates are so high is because of inflation. Absolutely. And so if that were to get solved overnight, the demand is there. All right, so that brings us to the next point that Tucker said. Frankly, I think that actually it got worse over the past two years after the pandemic increased many Americans' appetite or need to live in a place of their own. So we've talked about this a lot. Yes. I feel like that crazy, you know, however many months, felt like a year lockdown. Mm -hmm. People really realized that just the value of having their own home. And working from home was awesome initially for a lot of people, yeah. Yeah. but then they started to get maybe annoyed by their kids a little bit. I, I don't I don't know how that would feel. Like, yeah, yeah. what the heck? Your kids messing you up in the yeah. middle of you trying to focus on work. Right. Um, and people living at home with mm -hmm. mom and dad, yeah. right? Tons of millennials doing that. Mm -hmm. And so all those people wanted homes. So yeah, absolutely that pandemic made things worse 100%. for that inventory problem, not to mention builders stopped getting permits. Yeah. They all slowed down because they were no one was really sure yeah. when it first hit what type of impact this was going to have on our housing market. And you know what my personal theory is? I think it's a security thing. A lot of people, including myself, got really just nervous just about what was going to happen in that time period. And having your own home, there's something so, mm. having so much security about that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Good call. Good all right. Call. So we're going to go. Oh, 
Yeah, so now now we're gonna kind of do is talk about, um, well, this, this quote relates to 2006 and, and the predatory lending, so I'll just read it real quick. In 2006, the market was largely propped up by risky lending practices that fueled synthetic demand, leading to the subprime mortgage crisis. When foreclosures caught up with big banks, the market collapsed. What followed was a downward spi spiral, not just in home prices, but in construction. That unwound much of the increase seen in the subprime boom. Ooh. So again, predatory lending, we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And so now kind of the question is, what does this mean? Yeah. What yeah. does this low inventory, like we've underbuilt mm -hmm. what is needed, yet mm -hmm. buyers can't afford really yeah. what the interest rates are right now. Mm -hmm. There's a future potential recession on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. So now the article turns to like, well, what can be done? Yeah. How do we fix it? And of course, everyone says we need more affordable housing. Mm -hmm. But there's a problem with more affordable housing, and that is a lot of people don't like the traffic <laughs> associated with it. Me, right there. They don't yeah. want it in the area. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk about some practical solutions that they mentioned and that we've thought of that are things that you guys should know about. 100%. All right. So red tape can lead to costly hurdles, Tucker said, whether they're regulations or single family zoning or minimum lot size requirements. And this next paragraph actually shocked me when I heard this number. I was yeah. surprised at how much money goes towards red tape. So consider this, an average of 40.6% of total developmental costs of multifamily development can be attributed to regulations imposed by all levels of government, according to a report published by the National Association of Home Builders. 40%. That's so insane. when people are figuring out developmental costs, design costs, engineer costs, a lot of that has to have the certain safety standards. Yeah. And listen, a lot of it's important, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. You can't just build whatever you want, when you want, on somebody else's property, mm -hmm. or you're too far over on their property line. Mm -hmm. Things have to be done right. But if 40% is spent on that, yeah, I mean, that's a big deal that if there is some way to cut 10, 20% off of yeah. that, it would help big time in the affordability of what can be done for some of those people. Absolutely. All right, so Tucker went on to explain that the thought in an interview with the Deseret News after Thursday's webinar pointing specifically to HB 462, a bill Utah lawmakers approved earlier this year requiring cities to zone for some moderate income housing while encouraging more dense housing to be permitted near public transit hubs. The bill is neither a pancetta, I hope I got that word right again, nor the last word on a state level pro housing supply policy, but is a meaningful step in the right direction, he said. Yes. So he's looking to Utah, kind of sh sharing some of the bills that we passed. And so first things first, if you're going to do high density housing, um, obviously somewhere where there's lots of transit. Yeah. Because I actually don't mind the idea of higher density, mm -hmm. but don't build parking spaces for those people. Yeah, <laughs> Because literally. the cars on the road, I think, are what give us most of the heartburn. For sure. Is yeah. having to compete with all the extra traffic. but. Mm -hmm as we kind of design some of these uh, multifamilies to say, no, there's not parking spaces, mm -hmm. but you're right next to tracks. We've got Uber, we've got Lyft, we've got, you know, some, some very good economical transportation options for people that would be very important. That's how they do it. Ah! That's how they Ooh. do it in New York. Bless you. That's Excuse me. in the big cities. That's, yeah. that's kind of their style, what they do. So, yeah. so uh, I'm going to tell you guys something that I think was, is kind of a really good solution as well. Um, because higher density housing, no one wants that by their house. Right. They're right. like, oh, put that in by somebody else's house. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got kind of a pretty good solution that, you know, we had a senator on our show several years ago come in and he had a great suggestion. And that was simply, what if the cities voted mm -hmm. on how much density they wanted in their city mm -hmm. and the cities that don't want higher density have to pay a higher property tax yeah. on their property However, the cities that allow higher density, they get to pay a lower mm -hmm. property tax overall. That way you, the consumer, can kind of choose where you want to live. Yeah. If affordability is an issue, yeah, you're going to have to put up with more traffic Yeah, and go live in this higher density city. Mm -hmm. But your property taxes could be so low yeah. that that may be worth it. And on the flip side, if you don't want the traffic... Yes, me right there. <laughs> then you can pay a higher price taxes to live in a city that 
maybe isn't allowing that. Right. And I thought that was a great win-win. That is a win-win, yeah. Be because like there are two sides of the equation. For sure. Everyone's for higher density housing until it gets close to them, yes. and then and then they don't want it. 100%. Yeah, I really like that. That's a good another, idea. another strategy that they pointed to, um, they quoted Stephanie Daly, and, and you and I have talked about this before. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let you go ahead and read that. Yeah, so Stephanie Daly at General GC for her father's company, Stephen Daly Construction. If we could figure the next generation out, it would solve a lot of our problems, she said. What she means by that, she said, is encouraging more trade work in schools to help tackle labor shortages in construction, carpentry, architectural drafting, and other skills crucial for the home building industry. So what's she saying? Honestly, I mean, people people tend to, you know, make fun of like plumbers a little bit for what they're known for. <laughs> I see their butt crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. But their butt crack is full of money now. <laughs> right. It's Those true. guys are rich. It's true. And there's a shortage of them. I actually have to hire one and it's expensive. So expensive. Yeah. So, and there there is a shortage just because um, there's been less people going to those trade schools well, so. yeah and 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 they're in such high demand so like what if they did go into the high schools mm -hmm. and they started to help these kids implement things yeah I'm gonna absolutely cough. <laughs> excuse me yeah um if they went into the schools and helped you know encourage like hey you guys should sign up for you know do this you can make this money um we're yeah, talking be, six figures yeah. for plumbers electricians like it is not hard for them to make six figures yeah in this economy and that's something that as a state, if we had more laborers uh -huh. in these industries, the price that they are charging would not be as high, just like the law of supply and demand, right? Yeah. You get double the amount of plumbers, double amount the electricians competing for the jobs, mm -hmm. and they're gonna lower that price down, which again, helps the affordability. So we wanna know from you guys, are you yeah. experiencing these issues? with contractors charging high, high, high prices. Yeah. Are you guys, what is your thoughts on high density, right? Yeah. Is there a place for that? Is there not a place for that? Yeah. Let us know what you guys think because we're curious in all areas. Do you know what I want to know what they think? I want to know what people have to think about the shortage of trades. Drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about the shortage of that stuff? We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like us and subscribe for all real estate updates.